Nearly one million American kids run away from home each year. And they run away because they're pushed out by parents who don't want them. They're abused psychologically, they're abused emotionally, they're abused physically or sexually. They go to the big cities and they work the streets and they live in cheap hotels. And they're the kids of doctors and dentists, firemen, salesmen. Many of these one million kids resort to prostitution or pornography to make a living. Tonight on Channel 5 at 9 o'clock, we have a special program called Mom, I Want to Come Home Now. This is a show that deals with runaways, runaways who go and get money through prostitution. Uh, that's our subject of the show today. The symptoms and the causes behind running away and getting involved in prostitution or pornography. We have a couple of runaways with us who did just that. We have a psychiatrist, Dr. Leon Tech. We have one of the producers of the show, which you'll see here on Channel 5 tonight. And we have a member of the staff of Phoenix House, which is a great organization helping those people. Let's begin the program by taking a look, as we will frequently throughout today's show, at a clip from tonight's program. The program that you'll see tonight is called Mom, I Want to Come Home Now. And here's a clip from that show. Sometimes I feel very depressed and I feel sick and turned off by doing it. And then other times I enjoy it so much because of the people I meet, how I can associate with them, you know, and things I can learn, you know, from them. Just just being with uh, men, you know, it's kind of nice that you can have sex with them and you can get paid for it. You know, you can leave the situation with something standing on you, if you, you know what I mean? I mean, I could walk away from a trick and have money in my pocket and feel fine about the date and everything and just be happy that I have that money. I usually start at asking them for 25. Most I go is 20, you know. Usually all I get is 30 most. Now, that's a clip from a show you're going to see here tonight called Mom, I Want to Come Home Now, 9 o'clock. The sh subject of that show and the subject of our midday show today is... Uh, teenage runaways and getting involved in prostitution. Sitting in silhouette on our midday stage right now is a young woman who uh, ran away from home some time ago, came to New York, as many do, and ended up living a life where she was supporting herself by prostitution. First, I want to thank you for being with us today and for sharing your story in hopes that this can help some other people who might be in the same situation potentially as you have been in. You're over this now, that, that is correct, you're at yes, Phoenix I House am. now? Mm -hmm. Can we explore some of the uh, reasons as to why you left home? How, how old were you when you left? Um, I left home at the age of 14, and um, I stayed in the streets, well rather in New York, for six months, and um, <clears throat> I, well I didn't prostitute with girlfriends I started on my own before I got into any you know any friends or whatever I had sure. um, then after a while um, I met with two of my girlfriends and um, we was going to a disco one night and we met up with a, just a total stranger from the street and um, he said that we wanted to go to his apartment and we said it was okay and he started working us that night and well, this this guy was a pimp. Yes, he yeah. was. And um, can I, let me ask you this: uh, When, at the, where were you living, and how were you supporting yourself prior to turning to prostitution to get money? I was living in the streets, sleeping in abandoned buildings, um, buses, cars, stealing from stealing money from supermarkets, trying to eat, or I just wouldn't eat at all. Mm. Now, was that better than, than, than gutting it out at home? What were the circumstances that could have been, that were so bad at home that drove you to a life like that? Um, me and my mother couldn't get along, and we, was, we would always have fights and arguments, and it'd be, about, it'd be about the smallest things that you could even think of. And I just got fed up one day, and I left, you know. Um, she has told me, you know, she has confronted me many times about sending me to a group home and sending me to here and sending me to there. So there was a sense that she didn't yeah, want she you and like she was rejecting you and pushing you out. Rejecting me, yeah. When you left home, what did you think the future held for you? I mean, how much money did you have in your pocket the day you left? Um, what I, I, the day I left I had about fifteen dollars, sixteen. Right. And when I left, it's like 
At first I was scared because I um, blew my school. Um, I, when I went out there, I didn't have that many much friends. Um, actually, nobody to come and talk to. Mm -hmm. And I felt like very lonely outside. Right. The, the night that the uh, pimp made the overture to you and your friends, had you considered the prostitution? Obviously, you were aware of the fact that there were a lot of other kids in situations like you, yours who were making some money, mm -hmm. maybe not big money, but some money doing it. Was this on your mind that you wanted to get into it? Um, it wasn't on my mind, actually, but it was something towards the point I took an attitude and I just didn't care no more and I went with it. How much sexual experience had you had? Um, well, my, my first sexual experience was um, at the age of 14 with um, a guy from school uh -huh. and behind the stairs. And it was like we cut class and he told me that he wanted me to get down with him and I said fine and we just did what we had to do. So, okay. so. You, you had some, but not a, a tremendous amount of experience. But yeah. The, so how did, the, how did the, the pimp make the overture? I mean, what did he say the deal was going to be? Well, he said that um, we was going to be working in certain sections and different parts. Um, what sections? Um, in bars and um, different parts of the streets. Here um, in Manhattan? Here in Manhattan. Here in Manhattan. Um, <laughs> what did he tell you to do? I mean, you know, you're a little. You're he a little he kid. would dress us up. He would dress us up in short, real short shorts, big high heels, um, and he would tell us to go out there and just do what whatever we had to do, and to bring the money back. And I kind of look at that because as I was doing this, I was saying, well, maybe I could get some money, and maybe I could just feed myself the way I want to, but it didn't look that way. It looked like he was taking the money just for him to be how, taken. How, what was the deal? How was the cut? How much on, a, on a, a night would you bring home and how, and how much would you get and how much did he get? Um, I would bring um, like maybe 280 or 250, uh, 250, something like that. Or if I didn't bring nothing at all, he would say, well, why didn't you? And I would say, because I didn't want to, and he would beat me. You he know? would then beat you? Did, yeah, he would where beat did, me. Did, did you live in his apartment or in a place he provided for you? No, was... we lived all together in his apartment. And he would send us out one by one, you know, either in the mornings or at night, and he would just send us out there in the street. Well, you must have been able to retain some of this money for yourself, correct? I mean, you didn't have to give him everything, did you? Um, no, not necessarily. I, I, I kept some of it, but I was like, I don't know, I, I was sometimes scared to use it. And You grew up so fast. What, what did you feel like on the first night that you were doing this, dressed up as a hooker on the streets? Did you, I mean, did, were you thinking at all about your family or when you were really little yeah, kid? Yeah, I, I was What goes think, through your mind? I was thinking about, oh, I was thinking about, oh my God, if I get pregnant, um, how am I going to face my family? Um, who am I going to turn to to help me out? Um, I felt like I was ashamed at myself. I felt like um, I didn't respect myself as a young lady. Um, I just felt out there alone in the world. Did you consider going home? I mean, just, you know, getting, Many a times, getting on the bus? And... Many a times, but then again, I felt scared. Scared of what? What kind of reprises? Scared of the rejection, they might not take me back. So when you were doing this, I mean, this tender age, what's the, what were you thinking, the fu what about the future of your life? Did you know ultimately that you were going to need some kind of therapy, some kind of rehabilitation to get you out of this? Yeah. You did know that? Yes, I did. You were aware that, that this was a dead end I street. was aware that I was getting tired that um, it wasn't getting me nowhere. It wasn't getting me no education. Did you get nothing. into drugs at all? Alcohol and reefer. Mm. So how did you come to uh, break the cycle and get off the streets? Well, first, how long did you actually do it? Um, I did it for about 10 months. Um, I was in the streets for six months. Um, 
Do you ever get arrested? No, never. Did any, did any of the tricks ever beat you up? Yeah, that was the only one that ever did. Um, the pimp or some of the customers? No, just the pimp. You know, if I would do something wrong, if I didn't bring the right amount of money, if I would just... Why did you stay? Why did you stay under his influence? <clears throat> I stayed because he said that he loved me and he said that he was going to give me everything and he was going to take care of me. And it's just totally doing a number on you. It's like yeah. a brainwashing number. Mm -hmm. how, how, could, how could he be better than, than, the, than the mother you didn't get along with? Well, he was, he, I, I look at it that, okay, he wasn't better, but you know, he was something that I needed. He was something that I could depend on, that I could sit down or, or just come up to him one night and just say, hey, you know what, this is what's happening. But I, f I guess I, I was fooled. Who was the youngest girl you met during this period of your life who was doing the same thing you were doing? Um, the youngest girl was, um, you know, hmm. her name was Lisa. All right, let's, uh, again, I thank you for your honesty. I want you to stay. We have, uh, we're going to be joined by another example of such a runaway right after this break. Sometimes people, they don't really make any money. It depends on, you know, how bad they want you or how drunk they are. A lot of the Johns are really alcoholics, you know. They go to the bar, they get drunk, they're walking home, they see someone they like, you know, just, uh, rah, 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 you know, come over, 40 bucks. They'll hand you 40 bucks, okay? I ask them right off. Okay, we are joined right now by another runaway. Uh, we're going to call her Jane. And before I get into talking to Jane, Mary, I want to just go back and ask you two things. The first mm -hmm. is, when you were uh, on the streets, mm -hmm. how, how, how many, were there a lot of guys like this guy we just saw from the, the clip from tonight's show out there working? Male? Yes, there was a lot of them. There was a whole Did they work in the same way with pimps and so forth, or they have a different setup? To no, they had way? a different setup, a different total setup. All right, and then the other thing I wanted to ask you, before we get into talking to Jane is, how did you get out of it? What broke the mold? What broke the pattern? What broke it was, I got tired. Um, I said to myself, well, now it's time for me to look at another way of things. And I just left, you know, mm -hmm. just said goodbye. So it was over. Yeah. Jane, welcome, welcome to our show, and, and thank you for being with us. Let's thank hear a little you. bit about your story. You're from, from where originally? I'm from Casita, Georgia, originally. And how old were you when you left home, Jane? Um, I was 14 when I left. And what were the reasons why you left home? Well, it was because, you know, like, me and my mother wasn't getting along, you know. She would, um, you know, like, you know, just, um, you know, um, talk about, you know, little petty stuff, you know, that didn't really, you know, like, make any difference, uh -huh. you know. And you didn't. You didn't like. You, you weren't getting along. You also had a drinking problem at the time. Yes, correct? I had a drinking problem. So how? Did, what were your plans? How did you? How did you get literally transport yourself from Georgia here to New York? Well, you know, I you know like stole two hundred dollars from my mother, and um, I caught the Greyhound bus up here. Landing totally by yourself, right? Yes, totally. At by the myself. bus terminal, and w yeah. with some money in your pocket. Where did you go yeah. at first? Where did you sleep the first night? Well, the first night, you know, it was like I stayed in the bus terminal because, you know, I didn't, you know, like really know New York. So, you know, I stayed there for the night. But sleeping on one of the benches? Yeah. Or sitting up, sleeping? Yeah. All right, then the next day, what, what were your plans? You were how old again? 14? Yeah. What were your plans? What did you think you were going to accomplish? Well, um, I didn't really know. I was just, um, you know, like... I didn't really know what, um, you know, what I was going to accomplish. I was, you know, like, just thinking of, you know, like, wanting to see New York. Okay. So you came to New York because of an interest in wanting to see yeah. New York. At the same time, putting your mother, putting the family behind you, you knew you had a, a drinking problem and so forth. Did you have prostitution on your mind? Did, did, is this something you thought, ah, well, you know, worst comes worse, I can always do that and make money? And no, I wasn't, you know, like, thinking that way. I was, you know, like, I don't know really how I was thinking, but that, you know, never crossed okay. my mind. Okay, how did it eventually turn out that you got involved in being a prostitute? Well, I met this guy, and, you know, he was talking to me. Where did he, you meet him? I met him in the um, bus terminal that 
um, that morning, you know, when I, you know, like... That very same day, your first day in New York. Yeah. And what did he say? You know, he was asking me, um, you know, where was I from? And I was, you know, like telling him. And then, you know, like he told me, um, you know, that he wanted to, you know, like talk to me. And I said, okay. So right. he took me to his apartment in Manhattan. No, in Brooklyn, sorry. He took me to his apartment in Brooklyn and, you know, I was like, I was scared at first because I really didn't know the guy and I didn't know, you know, like what, we, like what was, um, you know, his purpose of wanting to talk to me. What so, happened? So he took me there and, um, you know, he said um, that he wanted me to prostitute for him. And I was saying, you know, like, at first I was scared because I didn't know New York and I didn't, you know, like, really want to, you know, like, do something like that. Well, what, what kind of sexual experience had you had well, at this point in your life? I started having sex at the age of 13. And my first sexual experience was, it was like at home. You know, I had a boyfriend and everything, but, you know, my mother didn't know. Right. And she would, um, you know, like, leave me at home sometimes by myself. And I called him up, and he came over to my house, and and we did, you know, like what we had to do. And it was like, at first I was scared, but you know, I sort of like. So that. by the yeah, so by the time you came to New York, you had had some sexual experience, and yet, as you were in this man's apartment in Brooklyn, 14-year-old girl coming to New York without much, you know, worldly experience, didn't the pro how did you feel about the prospect of? being a prostitute and having to deal physically with all different kinds of people, sexually. But was that unappealing, appealing? Uh, were you afraid of it? Yes, I was very scared because I really didn't know what to look for, you know. I didn't know how to go about doing it. And it was, you know, like very upsetting to me. I understand that. Though, but nevertheless, how long did it take from that first meeting in that man's apartment in Brooklyn uh, before you were actually doing it? That night. So you came, and the first full day, within 24 hours, you yeah. were working the streets. Yeah, I was. What, tell us about the experience that night. Where did he send you, and how, what did he tell you to do? Well, he put me on 42nd Street, and he told me to, you know, like, if I, you know, like, saw a guy that I thought would, you know, like, you know, like, would want to have sex, sex with a young right. teenager. He told me to, um, you know, like, go over and talk to him. And, you know, like, he had me, you know, like, dressed up, you know, in shorts and a tank top and all that. And I was, you know, like, very upset because it was at night and he wasn't, you know, like, really nowhere around. Well, yeah, well, I'm curious about a couple of things. Where did he tell you to go to have the sex? I mean, you were there on 42nd Street. What instructions did he give you about where you are going to, to get together with the, the customer? Um, he just told me, you know, like, wherever they take me, you know, and I was like, you know, I was like very upset with that. So what happened with the very first customer? Where did you end up being taken? Well, I ended up being taken to the Clinton Hotel in Manhattan. And it was like, you know, we, um, you know, like we had sex that night and he gave me $45 and I was like, sure, okay. So, you know, I left and I came back to, you know, like where he had left me. Dropped you off, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And how long did this process continued. I assume that you were working the streets all yeah. the time. You didn't get involved in being in any houses or anything like no. that. You were literally a hooker on the streets. Yeah. How long did you keep doing that? I did that for about three weeks and then, you know, I was like saying, you know, I'm tired of this, you know, I don't want to have anything to do with this guy. So? So, you know, I just, you know, like up and left. Where did you go? Well, I went, you know, I just, you know, like walked around for a little while trying to, you know, like get my head together because I didn't know where to go. Did you, were you drinking at all at this point? Yes, you know, um, um, the last night that I was out there, I didn't go back to him, but I still, you know, like had the money that the customers had gave me. Right. So I went and I bought me a bottle and, you know, 
I was like walking around drinking, you know, trying to, you know, like get my head together. I got it. Let's take a break and we'll continue with both our guests uh, right after this message. You know, I just play it cool with them, and just I just see how they react. You know, to it. If they if they say no, and I don't believe them, they don't convince me with the no. You know, or something. Then I just walk away. You know, I don't say nothing more. But if I I feel they're all right by the way they're acting and stuff, I you know I'll talk to them more and, and you know just get 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 it set up. You know, it's not hard really. That is a clip from the show, which is a first-run documentary. It's going to be shown here tonight at 9 o'clock on Channel 5. And then following that, WNEW-FM Radio uh, is going to have a follow-up program uh, at, from 10 to 11 uh, with open discussion about the show. So we urge you to watch this. And that's the subject of our program today. Uh, so far on the show, I've been speaking with two very young women with, who've had a lot of old experiences, I would say. And now let's continue our conversation uh, with both of you. When you were working the streets, how, you would, how many, in an, an average night, how many uh, tricks were there? How many, how many customers? Four? Five? There was um, four. Four. Now, Five. what did you do about birth control? I didn't do anything because I didn't know where to go for it. I mean, yeah, a hospital, but I didn't know how or, you know, um, what methods would be appropriate. Yeah, appropriate Jane, how, how about you in birth control? Did you, did you do anything? No, I didn't, you know, like use birth control because, you know, this was my first time in New York and I didn't, you know, like really know where to go to get it. So it was like, you know. And the, the pimps never, they didn't care about no, that, right? No, no. Did you get pregnant at all? Um, I was two and a half months pregnant. And one of my girlfriends told me about this hospital, um, Metropolitan, where they do abortions. Yeah. And I went there, and when I got the abortion, I was scared at first to get it because of <laughs> I said, It's oh. all scary. Everything you're telling me, yeah. I think, is scary. And after it was over, I said, well, now what next? You but know? didn't anybody there, you know, say, "What are you doing? Are you a prostitute? Why are you you're 15 um, years old? Why are you pregnant?" He, you know, gets here's here's some birth control pills. Did anything like that happen? Well, yeah, they asked me questions, but they never offered me any pills okay. or any anything. They would just say, "Well, why'd you do it? And how dumb can you be? And all this." Yeah. And, Every but, time they would tell me that, it would reflect the picture of my mother. I hear that. I hear that coming through. What about the venereal disease? Oh. Um. VD. Um. Did you have any problem with that, Jane? Yes. I've had um, gonorrhea twice. And it was, like, very, you know, like, hard on me because I didn't know where I got it from or whom I had got it from. And, how, and who you gave it to in yeah, the process. Yeah, and I didn't, you know, like, know how to go and get rid of it. So it was like, I just had it, you know. And, like, he wouldn't, you know, like, take me to, you know, like, get a checkup or nothing like that. It was just all about, you know. So how did eventually you get rid of the VD? How long did you have gonorrhea? I had gonorrhea for two weeks, and I didn't know And it. you were working during this yeah, time? Yeah, I was how still working. How did you get rid of it? Well, how I got rid of it, I didn't get rid of it until I came into the program. Okay, so you got out. All right, th th let me ask you then the same question that you know, I said to, to Mary before. How did you get out of this situation of being a streetwalker and under the control of a pimp? How did you break it? Well, really, I just, um, you know, like, I just walked out, you know. I told him one day, you know, that I couldn't take it anymore and that, you know, like, it was getting real frustrated for me. Did he beat you? He was going to, but, you know, I, like, ran out the door before he could, you know, like, catch me. And it was, like, you know, crazy. Yeah, but you escaped. Yeah, I got away. How do you two feel about men now? 
Um, I feel that they're cruel. Um, they don't care about whether you're young, old, or whatever. They just want that lay and they'll be <coughs> satisfied. Um, I feel that they're, they're, they're just disrespected women, young ladies, and themselves. And I feel that I can't trust them no more. Mm. And how do you feel about sex now? Um, how I feel towards sex? Well, one time, okay, my mother used to tell me, well, you shouldn't do sex because sex is a cruel thing in a young lady's life. And I would look, like, look at her like she was crazy because my friends was doing it yeah. and my sister was doing it. And I said, well, hey, if there's nothing wrong in them doing it, yeah. why can't I do it? You know? Well, I guess what I mean for both of you is after having had an enormous range of sexual experience under really seedy, rotten conditions, mm -hmm. having gotten pregnant, having had abortions, having had gonorrhea for two weeks and so forth, uh, do you feel that you are capable in the future of uh, attaining normal, uh, a normal relationship. By normal, I simply mean a you know one-on-one -on -one relationship with a man during which uh, you will, you would have normal sex. Um, I think so. Yes, because uh, all of my other relationships were like, eh, you know, and I never had a straight, straight relationship where. Uh, it wouldn't be all about sex. It would just be, you know, two people understanding each other, two people looking at each other yeah. a different way. How do you feel about this same question, Jane? No, I don't think I, I would because... You don't would, think you're capable of right. achieving a normal relationship because of the experience you've yeah, had? Because, because you, you're very young. There are many years ahead of you where you can detoxify and get rid of this rotten experience that you had. Yeah, but, you know, it would, you know, like, take me a long time too, you know, like get, um, you know, like get over it because every time, you know, like I look at a male, it would be like, you know, well, you know, maybe he's going to do the same thing, you know, that this guy did and it would, you know, like take me a while to, you know, like get over that. It's going to. That's, yeah. that's, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Hypothetically, in the future, if you are, you know, meet a man and fall in love and get, and get married, will you tell him about this experience? that you ran away and were a prostitute in your mid-teen years? I would because I, 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 more or less I would feel very comfortable because I would say to myself, well, now here's a person that's here and he's sitting, sitting down with me. He's understanding what I went through and he's like having my back and in my corner from whenever that ever feeling kicks up, he'll be there for me. Jane? Yes, I... I believe that I would, you know, like tell him, but it would probably take me a while to, you know, like tell him what really happened. That's but eventually I would. What advice would you give to someone who's watching this program right now who is in two categories? The first category is you just arriving in New York being a runaway. <coughs> Maybe they're sitting in a department <coughs> store, right, watching this show just to get out of the cold. They've gone into a store and by total coincidence, they're watching this program right now. What do you say to that girl or boy, right, who has just landed in New York? They uh, hate their mother, they hate their father. What advice do you have to them? I would tell them it's not worth it. It's not, the reason why I would say that is because, um, you know, they, they, they would be, dis, you know, disrespecting themselves. It's not even worth it running away from home, you know, someplace where it's warm. You're saying where, it's worse doing yeah, it's what you did than it was dealing, at home. Dealing no matter with how bad no things were at how home, bad it is. the problem could be solved at home, right? Yes. It's not going to be solved living, living, no, on, it's not. living on the streets. And so. I would, um, you know, like tell them to, you know, like go back home and see, you know, like how it would be, you know, you know, if... You know, like if they could, you know, like sit down and communicate with their parents because, you know, like that's what make a lot of kids run away nowadays because, you know, like kids and parents aren't communicating. And, that's you know, it. And, and, you know, that's, you know, like very bad because, I mean, you know, kids, kids didn't ask to be brought into the world. But since we are here, at least we could try to communicate and, you know, like 
sit down and, and you know, like talk about certain things that are you know like happening to us so that we won't have to you know like go through what um, what me and Mary went through. Well put. Let's continue our program right after this break. Thank okay. you both very much.